You know, it's hard to imagine that just 21 days into the new year of 2021 and not much has changed from what happened in 2020. Now, if that sounds like the encapsulation of defeatism, it's because things really haven't changed. Not one iota. 2020 was a year of devastating extremes. It was a year that saw us stripped of our freedoms. Lives were destroyed, economies ruined, and we witnessed the mastering of the art of how to politically weaponize COVID. And as this year of 2021 continues to just pass, things haven't improved. They've actually worsened, if that's possible. As much as 2020 heightened the struggles of humanity through an invisible enemy, we continue to witness governments of all political colors, both state and federal, operating without cohesion or any uniformity. We expect a uniformity, and we expected it to be administered by the federal government. And we also expected that there would be some measure of cohesion among the states. Yet, what do we find? We continue to witness pandemic politics as the driving force behind how state governments are handling COVID. And we're seeing the federal government refuse to enforce a strategy around state borders and proper testing. Last year, the informer got to speak to John Kelly, the CEO of Atomo Diagnostics. Atomo is the only medical devices company in Australia to have acquired TGA approval for both its rapid antigen and antibody testing. Rapid antigen and antibody testing can quickly and cost effectively determine if someone has had COVID or has it. And since that story ran, we've had uh, borders open and close almost instantly when small clusters of COVID cases have been identified. Sydney's outbreak of eight cases didn't require the rest of Australia to go into a mad panic and see New South Wales cut off with a series of crazy border closures that lacked any strategic thought. Again, we saw the damage that governments can cause to people's lives and the economy. So here's a question. Have the state and federal governments learned anything from 2020 around managing, containing, or actually controlling COVID? I think the short answer is no. From what they have learned, I can deduce it's this, how to master the art of manipulating and controlling people. It seems that they've failed to understand the Churchillian mantra, you're bound to repeat your mistakes if you don't learn from history. And this is exactly what's been happening. Again, governments, both state and federal, have not learned from what actually happened in 2020. They've failed to approach the control and containment of COVID in a manner that eases public and community pain. No, no doubt about it, failed. Moreover, they've reverted to enhancing the pain and anguish through a series of border closures based on fear and emotional intimidation, especially over Christmas. The time has come to rethink how our state governments approach the management and containment of COVID, and for the federal government to begin actually operating as a real authority, focused on managing and protecting the interests of all Australians, something that just isn't happening. Rapid antigen testing should become a critical part of Australia's COVID management strategy. And it must be used rather than relying solely on PCR testing. Because we know that PCR testing is no longer the only game in town. When it was, fair enough, but it's not the case today. Discarding rapid antigen testing is nonsensical, especially when you consider the countries the world over are now moving towards its use as part of their strategic COVID plans. Rapid antigen and antibody testing is really critical in not only getting the country moving again, but also in helping to contain, to control and to manage the spread of the virus. The testing you see helps to eliminate the spread of COVID, especially through aged care homes. Rapid antigen antibody tests are around 90% accurate when you compare them to PCR testing, which is closer to 96% accurate. But they can actually return a result within 15 minutes compared to the lag time of 24 to 48 hours that the pathology groups need to return a result with their PCR testing. So all the while that that's happening and people are awaiting their results, 
If they do have the virus and they don't know it, what are they doing? They're simply spreading COVID. The lag time can increase the contagion, which can then become insurmountable. So rapid antigen testing can help ensure safer workplaces with established, regular, efficient, effective testing and monitoring. It can eliminate border closures. It can also give governments more certainty around containment, which is the ideal. Now, it's this lack of strategic foresight and a refusal to use rapid, rapid antigen testing because of the power of the pathology lobby groups, which can influence state and federal governments along with the monetary value of each PCR test of $110 per test per person. And what it delivers financially to the pathology groups compared to the cost of the rapid antigen tests of $25 per test per person. So to think that those numbers are actually being placed ahead of the lives of every Australian, that's disturbing. And from where I sit, it's apparent that the powerful pathology groups have far too much influence over the states and the federal government. Countries all over the world are moving towards rapid antigen testing as part of their overall COVID strategic management plan, as I said earlier. But Australia isn't and that simply makes no sense. States like Victoria have made great strides in overcoming the COVID pandemic. However, the use of rapid antigen testing as part of its strategic armory to fight and tackle cluster outbreaks would be a far more effective and appropriate way of dealing with an outbreak than just simply relying on PCR testing. The time's now for the federal government to direct the states to use rapid antigen antibody testing, then just sit idly by and allow the PCR testing to reap in millions for the pathology powerhouses on the back of many thousands of suffering Australians.